<laughs> yeah, you got yourself caught up in a lot of really like weird things. Like when we when we last talked, you told me about the um the weather system you have. Yes, uh, I run a DIY weather station. <laughs> Yeah, uh, mostly because you know it was a science project for myself. It's like, how can we learn assembly here and uh, learn learn uh, ARM assembly for Raspberry Pi, uh, specifically Pi Two, which has like next to no actual documentation whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But it's fine. We can reverse engineer drivers and figure out how this works. Uh, I still don't know how to how to write an assembly, but uh, apparently I made I made that system work fairly well. It mm. it works reliably, but. Uh, for those for those not in the know, mm -hmm. I have twenty seven Pi twos that all run Gen two because Gen two is the only supported distribution for the for a device this old. <laughs> sure, sure. It's the only supported. It's the only supported distribution because uh, Arch Linux doesn't support drivers for it anymore. <laughs> That's <laughs> so it's like we. It's either LFS or Gen two. I might as well go with Gen two. Yeah, I would go Gen two in that case. Definitely. Uh, they almost. They almost never get updated, so I don't have to worry about compiling because, you know, uh, they're on an air gap network. Right. But I also happen to own a lot of land. I own a one. I own 120 acres of cornfield, mm -hmm. uh, effectively. And uh, this this plot of land came with telephone poles, which is also not something you typically get in the United States. Uh, because, you know, the company that owned the telephone poles mm -hmm. shut down uh, because, you know, U.S. government broke them up. They're. I'm sure you might have heard of them. They're called AT&T. Right, right. Uh, and, you know, nobody ever put claim on the phone poles. Mm -hmm. So by default, they're mine. <laughs> Wires included. <laughs> uh, your, your country is so, so weird. Like, the yeah. fact that you can just be like, yeah, you know, no one claims they're mine now. Like, it, it's the same thing with, um, like, okay, so in Australia, you don't, you own the land you don't own under the land yep. I, I there are some people i know like this yeah I, I know some people in the u.s that have like that have found like dinosaur bones on their land and because it's on their land they own them like it's just theirs. not always it's not, not not always like but in a lot of cases like especially like with the um with like the older properties when that it's been in their family for like you know 200 years or whatever like they just own down Everything. Yeah. yeah, you can own in the United States, you can own down as far as uh, 600 feet, if I remember right. You can own 600 feet underground and 120 feet above ground. Well, 120 feet above the highest point of your, of, uh, your structures. Right. So if you, you if you got like a TV antenna that shoots up to like 60 feet, mm -hmm. you have 180 feet of clearance on your property that you own. Mm hmm. So yeah, but, but anyway, uh, you own the phone lines. I I own the phone lines. The only trade off is that uh, these phone lines have to be disconnected from the national grid because mm -hmm. I'm not running a I'm not running a phone service. Mm -hmm. So uh, if I'm going to be doing anything, uh, I I technically could connect them and then run my own phone service if I really wanted to, but I don't want to do that. that seems so like a lot of, of course I didn't. So because you know my ISP also supports telephone, mm -hmm. I called them up and go like, "Hey, can you, can, can you disconnect these lines?" And they're, they're just like, "Why are we disconnecting lines? Because they're my lines. I don't want I don't want to be on your grid." <laughs> He's like, "Oh, okay, okay. Uh, let's just prove that these lines don't belong to anyone. They belong to you." And I'm like, "Yeah, here's a court ruling. <laughs> Homestead Act. It's great." Uh, but. But yeah, it's just like uh, <clears throat> so they they disconnected the lines mm -hmm. and uh, I we just made sure that the lines are still in interconnected with each other. Right. Uh, of course, this cost me money. Of of course, because you know I have to buy phone cable and stuff. And uh, we got everything tied together. And uh, I got the crash course on how to spin up my own phone service. Mm -hmm. uh, I am the phone number of one. <laughs> and each. And each pie has its own different phone number of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> all the way up to twenty-eight. That's... Because uh, my my phone number is one. <laughs> I love that because that's all that's needed. Mm -hmm. That's all that's needed. And uh, pie twos happen to run off of a five volt connection. Uh huh. Phone lines in the United States are five volts, so the pies not only are powered by the phone line. But uh, they they communicate uh, from the phone lines because uh, they they have temperature and moisture sensor sensors that can also apparently read nitrogen levels, which mm -hmm. I'm still working on figuring out. Uh, and th 
what these pies do is they literally phone home every three hours using a standard 56k dial-up modem. <laughs> uh, powered, of course, USB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, they they take the readings, they di- they dial up, and then they just send the, a 15 kilobit text file to to my fo- to my server, and that's how I can track the weather. That's so awesome. <laughs> I love that so much. Yeah, that and because, you know, I, I rent out a lot of my land to the farmers because I don't I don't farm myself. It's just mm-hmm. like I'll just rent the land out. That way, you know, somebody's using it because there's no woods there. Right, right. Uh, lighted, I did I did plant five acres of trees as a, a retirement plan, but uh, that that's uh, 60 years down, down in the future. And hopefully we still have a country by then. Well, you know, <laughs> see how that goes. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. But uh, I I I just send a farmer go go like oh yeah uh, I've got like these readings here from from uh, you know like all these little little devices I just set up here for, as like a science experiment. And he's like oh yeah that'd be kind of useful you know because you know it's nice to know how much water is in your field uh, that way you know that way you know if you have to water it or mm-hmm. you know if you have to inject it with nitrogen at all. And, where is the know, um, it- where would be there like. The not you nearest weather tracking. Uh, we have one on the local school, uh, which you know that's how I get like uh, radar. Right, 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 right. Uh, because I can't do radar mm-hmm. myself, mm-hmm. but you know I know exactly what temperature it is at my front door. Which you know it, the weather station might be off by like a couple of degrees because you know uh they're they're down a hill. Uh, about 30 miles. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure, like, you know, some government agencies wouldn't exactly be happy about you doing your own radar. No, that, it's actually perfectly fine. Is it? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, you, you can run your own weather radar in the, in the United States. It's There's nothing illegal about it. Okay. Uh, the only thing is that the only issue is if you ever broadcast. Right. Okay. You, you can receive all you want. Just don't ever broadcast. Right. Right. Okay. That, that makes sense. <laughs> so you have this... You have this set of Pi 2s that are hooked up to a dial-up network. <laughs> it, look, yep. it, if it works, it works. Um, it works. So, what... I, I'm sure it's going to get, like, super technical if you wanted it to, but, like, what is the... What, what is, like, the basic process of setting up your own, like, phone service? Like, how how does that even come about? Uh, believe it or not, all it involves is just a 56K modem. Uh-huh. And a server to run some software on, uh, and all you need is just a SIP server. Okay, sure. Just si- and then you just set up like an IP telephone. Huh? Uh, it's just that th- there's only one IP telephone, and it just relays to everything else. Huh? Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Where do you get fifty six k modems at this point? Uh, Amazon, okay, eBay. Uh, if I drive all the way to all the way to uh, the big cities, I can literally walk into a micro center and buy them. Oh, okay. <laughs> sure. I, <laughs> I didn't know. People still was... sell them. Yeah, well, yeah, I assume you can still get them secondhand. I didn't know you'd be like, you to buy new ones. No, you can, you can still get them brand new. Uh, the only thing that you can't find brand new is Pi 2s. Yeah, right. But thankfully, thankfully, people are dumping those on eBay for like 10 bucks. Well, I guess they are. <laughs> yeah, there are states that still have dial up in like certain regions so i guess it makes sense uh a lot of the uh something like 10 percent of the of the uh u.s rural area population still still is served dial up internet jeez because that is their only option well yeah until i guess you know starlink i mean it's thing and whatever it's either dial up internet or satellite based services which uh standard satellite services are kind of terrible Right. So what a lot of what a lot of people actually do is that they pay for both satellite and dial up because mm. dial up is actually the cheapest form of internet yeah, you can yeah, get in the yeah. United States too because who cares? Uh, it's like uh, ten bucks a month and mm. uh, you you've got your backup internet connection. You know, just in case you run out of your daily data cap on on the satellite. Mm. Let's have a look. I did look this up a little while ago. Let's see, nine dollars a month, Turbo USA. Okay. Yep. Yeah. A- <laughs> AOL. Okay. AOL, I think uh, Earthlink still sells dial-up. Yeah, Earthlink, ten dollars uh, goes up to twenty-five dollars after first three months. That's blue. Yep. Uh, uh Don't buy Earthlink; they've always been a scam. Uh, Juno, free up to ten hours per month, 
or thirty dollars for accelerated. What is accelerated? What does that mean? Uh, they serve it to you at fifty six k because that's all your motor is capable of receiving. <laughs> what we like: availability, price. Yeah, the price is pretty good. Security. Wait. Secu dial up uses a different IP address each time you log in, which makes it virtually impossible for hackers to spoof. You could also just do that on a regular connection. <laughs> Yeah, you can uh, just reset the. You can just uh, re renew your DHCP lease every uh, set number of hours. Most routers actually support scheduling. Actually, that, surprisingly. <laughs> okay, I like this. I like this benefit. Also, unlike broadband internet, a dial-up connection isn't always on, meaning you don't have to worry about anyone hacking your connection type. Any connection type? Anyone hacking your connection when you're not logged in? I guess that's fair. <laughs> guess yep. That's if you have, you know, a um, a internet connected printer, I guess no one can like print stuff on it if you just turn off your internet. Yeah. 